Morning. Morning. Mm -hmm. A couple of different programs for mapping and planning your hunts this, uh, this season, and we'll get started from there. So my name is Holly Moslin. I work for Nebraska Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever of Nebraska. I'm the Outreach and Communications Coordinator. I was an adult onset hunter, though I did begin hunting with my, my father pretty early on. It wasn't successful, and we only went out about one to three times a season, so I wasn't a very active hunter. But as I got into college, I became more active in hunting, and now I am the Pheasants Forever R3 Coordinator in that position. R3 stands for Recruit, Retain, and Reactivate, and it's a national movement to get people in the outdoors, especially in hunting, angling, and shooting sports. And so you'll hear us talk a lot about that, of getting people active and in the outdoors and enjoying our hunting heritage, because without hunters, we don't have funding for our wildlife habitats. Um, so big portion of my job is, is working to get people active in the field. This program, I'll be discussing some of the ways that we help provide resources for people to learn and get active. Um, if you're interested in doing anything um, hunting wise, Pheasants Forever does have um, hunting programs available. You can feel free to contact me. We'll be putting some of these links in the chat. Um, and you can contact me and we'll work on, on getting you together with a, an experienced hunter and hopefully claim your first gobbler for the year. Little bit about Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever. A lot of people associate us with just pheasants and quail, but we're actually called the Habitat Organization. So if you look at our logos, in little font below our, our main logo is the Habitat Organization. We work on putting habitat first. Without habitat, we won't have the, the populations of wildlife out there. So we understand that if you want the deer, the turkey, the pheasants, the pollinators, you have to put habitat first. We host an annual state habitat meeting. And this year it will be happening at Heartland Shooting Park near Grand Island. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about pheasants forever or habitat or hunting skills, feel free to save the date, June 26, 2021. Um, and we will be getting some more information about that meeting coming up. Julia just posted the link in the website so you can watch that or follow us on our social media for more information. Um, Another big thing, some of our opportunities for hunting, we do youth mentor hunts where we focus on youth, but we do adult programs as well. And again, if you're interested in something like that, feel free to contact me. My email has been posted in the chat. You can also find more at nebraskapf.com. The link Julia has put in the chat as well for that. Go ahead, getting started in the topic of turkey hunting. Uh, the spring season's just around the corner. When you're getting ready to select or prepare for the spring season, you want to do preseason scouting. Essentially what that is, is you're going to an area that you think or that you have previously seen turkey on, and you're gonna be looking for tracks. Um, so the footprints in the ground, um, Right now, it's been pretty nice, so you'll probably be seeing footprints in the mud. We might be getting a little more snow this weekend, so footprints in the snow are actually also helpful. Um, scratch marks. I'll show you some pictures of that here shortly. That's where they're looking for food and, and digging through stuff on the ground in order to find that food. Feathers that have fallen off are also a great indicator that there's turkey present in the area. Scat, um, so they're, they're excrements that are hanging around. Um, this is especially popular for roosting sites and knowing where they're sleeping at night. Listening for their calls. If you can hear them in the area, then that's also a good indicator that this might be a successful area for hunting at that location. And most importantly, if you see the turkeys, you have a possible good hunting location. And so here we have a couple of hens. We have three hens with four nice sized toms um, strutting or showing their their feathers off to try and get the ladies interested. On 
the green circle locations that I have, you can see where there's some bare loose ground and that's where they've been scratching at. They've been looking for bugs, seeds, um, anything that is edible for them. They're omnivores, they're um, opportunistic on whatever they feel like eating that day, they will have, um, they'll feed on those. And so if you can see the turkeys and you can see signs of turkeys, you have a good location for that. When you are out scouting, you will not want to be using turkey calls. Turkeys are a lot smarter than people give them credit for, and they do use vocalizations to communicate in, within their group. There is some research showing that they know the individual sounds of the other turkeys. Um, Greg Wagner just uh, wrote on this in some of his tips for scouting. And um, if you use a call during the scouting season and it ends up spooking them, it could prevent them uh, responding to that call during the hunting season. So try and focus more on being hidden, wear your camouflage, um, keep your distance from them, and mainly look for the signs and watch their behaviors during this time, rather than trying to actively call them in um, and potentially prevent a successful harvest during the season. At this point, we'll go ahead and get started on some resources for planning that Game and Parks has available. The first of those being the Learn to Hunt Species Fact Sheets. So we have the link listed there and I'll showcase it a little bit more here. We have a special website um, page called OutdoorNebraska.gov Learn to Hunt Nebraska. And while we'll be focusing more on the turkey species today, they do have resources for all species. So if you're a new hunter, learning to get involved with multiple species, um, definitely utilize that website. It even has some beginner tactics on shooting or patterning shotguns or learning how to sight in your rifle. Um, there's plenty of resources available for you. And again, feel free to ask any of the Game and Park staff um, on more. We'll be doing more of these turkey series throughout this spring um, and additional classes will be coming. Another great resource that will be coming over shortly is the trip planners. Um, so if you're an area that's not particularly well off for turkey populations, which is hard to find in Nebraska, we have quite the turkey population and we're ranked very highly for hunting in the nation. Um, these trip planners are broke down by species. They include locations and communities that have the best hunting and places that you can stay. And um, the trip planners are a fantastic resource there. Additional resources for planning, talk to, to hunters and landowners in your local area. A lot of hunters are willing to take you out and get you active, um, anything to keep the hunting heritage alive. And landowners, they know the turkeys are on their locations. Oftentimes they know exactly what they're doing at specific times of the day. So landowners can be great resources. Um, and as long as you ask for permission and get to know the landowner well, oftentimes they will grant you permission. Um, in those cases, our, our Nebraska landowners are a fantastic resource. They really work at putting habitat on the ground for all types of wildlife um, and are pretty welcome towards hunters in, in, the, in the population. Additionally, conservation organizations like Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever um, are another great resource. The National Wild Turkey Federation is a phenomenal one, especially for the turkey series. They have banquets ongoing right now. And if you attend those banquets, there is sure to be somebody there that's willing to help you get invested in the hunting. So we'll go a little bit more into each of those resources that I just mentioned. Here we have the Nebraska Learn to Hunt Nebraska website. Um, you'll see our Take Them Hunting campaign video, get people involved. That resource is available for you and you can win prizes. If you're out and learning to hunt with somebody or teaching somebody to learn to hunt, you can enter in that campaign and learn more about it um, and, and really keep people invested in that hunting heritage. On the right side, you'll see where you can buy permits. Mobile permits are allowed for turkey season and then the different um, other categories that are available. We'll skip right into the, the getting started forms that we have. When you work on turkey season, you'll want to know what you're hunting. So in the spring season, you are allowed to hunt hens with the exception that those hens must carry a beard. Um, so you'll see located here on this sheet, 
You have your gobblers or your toms on the left and your hens on the right. Um, bearded hens are allowed to be harvested in the spring due to it's a genetic oddity that they have um, that isn't necessarily desirable. So you can harvest them. And then you have jakes, which are your young toms, not fully developed. Their tails will be a little uneven. And then your full toms that generally have the longer beards, have a big, beautiful display on them. Um, and often are gonna be the more aggressive um, of the nature. All three are excellent options, provide a great source of protein and um, food for your family. Um, they generally come in different sizes. Your jakes are gonna be smaller than your toms and your hens will be smaller than your toms, but all will provide a great source of protein for your families. Um, again, here you have the map that's showcasing some of the best of the locations for hunting turkeys. Again, Nebraska is ranked some of the top in the nation for hunting turkeys. Um, so it's pretty easy to find them around the state. Um, different types of things that you can have while you're out hunting. It's not necessarily a must have, but is generally best um, included in order to provide the best success for your turkey hunting. The last of these is the planning sheet that we were talking about. So we have two different types of planning sheets. We have the Pine Ridge and the Southwest um, that provide great locations for hunting turkey. I just have a portion of the sheets here, but you can find those at Outdoor Nebraska. Catch up on some of my links here. Learn to hunt Nebraska. The about turkeys, which we were showcasing some of the photos there. And Holly, if the, any of them have questions about this uh, material and getting more specific into uh, the hunt itself and species, we're going to be focusing on that a lot more in detail in the coming weeks um, through our series, our, our Spring Saturday series, uh, focusing on turkey hunting. And I'm going to post that link there so that uh, everyone can see the dates and the topics in the future upcoming weeks. Absolutely. So in the coming weeks, we'll be focusing on other things. Um, right now, I'm just kind of covering the generals and we'll be getting more into the map planning here um, as we develop. The planning sheets also come with other species. Feel free to check those out. Um, but yes, great resources provide more information on how to hunt the turkey species and the other species that we have available. So moving into additional resources, more on the mapping portion, we'll be talking about Onyx Maps. Um, they're a partnership with the Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever um, organization. It's the number one hunting app um, that helps people locate and monitor their hunting locations or their desired locations. An additional one we'll be talking about is the Nebraska Game and Parks Public Access and Stubble Guides. Um, and they do have them online. So you don't have to have the physical form in hand, though they are very handy to have in your vehicles, um, but they do come on online. And so you can do your research there or pop on your phone if you have service in the field and look for another location. And then our regulation guides, which are also available online. So we'll go ahead and start with Onyx here. I am going to flip over to the actual Onyx website. Okay, so Onyx has recently added in this Explore the Unknown. Um, typically, they started with their hunting app first and are continuing to extend their mapping opportunities. We will be focusing on the first one with the red X, um, as that is the Onyx Hunt website. So in order to navigate this, you just go to onyxmaps.com, and then you're going to click log in or sign up for those of you who do not have an account. And you log in. This is available for your phone or on your desktop. When I'm home and pre-season pre planning, I'm typically looking for locations here on the desktop version so I can see a little bit more. However, when I'm out in the field, I am heavily reliant on my phone to, to help with that. And I'll kind of cover those differences as we go on. So here, you have the navigation functions where you can zoom out and see large areas, or you can zoom all the way in and focus on a specific area. So first thing 
that I will explain here is this map layers key over here on the left hand side. You have a lot of different functions and it's up to personal preference on which ones you want to have activated at times. So I have the preference that I'd like to see where the governmental lands are at, um, the hunting units, that's best for deer season, conservation land and partnerships, open fields and waters, as well as the Nebraska parks and trails. You do have other zones that are available, like I said, um, you can have private lands if you're working mainly on private land hunting. That's nice to have on when you're trying to check for border, so I'll turn that on. And you can see how the red sections divide up the borders of the personal properties. If you were to click on the property, it'll give you some information about the person who owns it. And um, some of them have contact information there. So it's nice if you're looking to connect with a landowner in that manner. The governmental lands are really nice. You can see here we have the Central Power District and then Game and Parks Wildlife Management Area. Today I'll be focusing more on this Dogwood Wildlife Management Area. Oops. Yeah. So when you're looking on a map, you want to be looking for things that your target species wants in their habitat. So turkeys are pretty uh, multifunctional. They like to have water. All animals need water. All humans need water. So water is pretty important in an area that you're looking for, for, for good hunting. Turkeys are also going to prefer um, thicker trees. They're roosting in those trees. And so if you have some older cottonwoods in the, in the area that you're looking at a potential hunting, um, then there's the function, you could have the function of the turkeys roosting in those trees. And so here, if we're looking at the Dogwood Wildlife Management Area, we have two ponds located on the property, one on the east, east side and one on the west side. And then you also have a channel of the river running through the Platte River. So that's a great source to find. Those turkeys will be moving throughout, changing where they want to be. The smaller ponds are gonna offer amphibians and other insects for them to feed on, whereas the river um, will be a little bit more difficult to manage, but provide some rich resources right up against it. Another great thing that you wanna look for with turkeys is you do wanna have some open areas, especially here in the spring. So as we zoom in, You'll see that there's some open fields next to the water, up against the road. And if you navigate through some of these trees, you'll see some more clearing spaces within those trees. The reason why you'll want some open locations is during the spring, they're looking for mates. So they need areas where they can display their feathers and try and attract those females in. So if you're setting up for a, a stalking location where you're going to sit and try and call those turkeys to you, those open locations are going to be very useful. Um, somewhere near the trees where the turkeys have cover and believe they're protected, but you'll have the opening that you can set up your decoys and um, try and call those turkeys in. The other nice part about Onyx maps that I like is that you have a draw function. And so if I come in here, I can choose colors, I can choose the weight, the style of the line, and I can draw lines around the borders. Now, if I were to go all the way around this, it would complete the border and I can save that onto my map in order to create the boundaries if I'm out hunting. So I'll just kind of do this quickly. Get the road out there. And you have to double click on that last function in order to make it a polygon to make it that shape. And then I can type in dogwood WMA hunting location. And I can save that to my map. So what that does is anywhere where I'm at, whether I switch computers or if I switch phones, as long as I'm logged into my account, that will show up when I come to the area I want to be at. That's extremely helpful because Onyx allows you to, um, to save these maps offline. So in your, if you're in an area where you know you're not going to have good service, 
having this drawing tool on Onyx helps to make sure you're not crossing um, boundaries that you're not supposed to and helps you to know where you're navigating within that area. So that's super helpful in that portion. And then additionally, if we click back on our lines, it tells you the total distance around that shape. And so you'll know how, how, how vast of an area you're dealing with when you're planning on walking around these sites for your preseason scouting. Um, you also have the ability to edit it later on. So if I wanted to extend the line, say my favorite WMA um, continued to expand, then I can add into that. Or if I wanted to delete it, I can click on it and delete it from that function. How do they update the property owners? Um, so that is something that I was going to discuss here just a little bit. Onyx tries to keep up date with it every year. They're doing very well at keeping up to date with the agencies and the boundaries crossing, um, but it does require people to turn in their information um, to help function that. So I, I'll showcase one here that you'll want to cross-reference your, your boundaries with and your property owners with, um, but generally with CRP signups, which oftentimes come with um, public hunting, not in all cases, but in some cases, or any times they partner with an agency that does cost share incentives, um, it's part of the, the contract that they sign into. So Christy, we'll talk a little bit more about how to cross-reference that to make sure that the information is up to date, um, but they're getting better and better at keeping it up to date at all times. There is a report function that if you find the information is incorrect, um, you can report that function and Onyx is very responsive in getting that addressed. Um, the next part that we're going to discuss here is if we were to walk this area, there's a tracking function on. So so if I'm out walking this property and I have my phone, I'm going to pop over here. You're all getting a sneak peek into my favorite hunting zones here. So this is one of my favorite turkey locations. I'm also starting to mark it down for deer. But these blue tracking, these dashed lines, these turquoise ones, when I get to my hunting location, I can go onto my app and say that I want to track my path. So what it does is as I'm walking around this location, it's putting down the path that I chose to walk for that day. And when I conclude my path, I have the option of saving it or deleting it. So I've saved a couple of these locations so you can see kind of my path through the territory. But it's super helpful, especially in areas where you have thicker trees, so that you know where you can cross through and where areas are too thick. And so this is a nice function. It's also great if you're um, tracking how many miles you're putting in a day for health trackers or things like that. It gives you the total um, mileage that you've walked around the site. So extremely helpful. Another thing that's um, very unique to Onyx and helpful to a hunter are these waypoints. So you notice that I have several different colors. I have different symbols for each location. And so here in the middle where I have the turkey located, I actually saw a turkey. So I know they're utilizing that area there. The blue are the number of tree stands on the, the property. Um, and this is a WMA, so they should be down by this season, but there are some cases where people tend to keep them up. Um, and then you have other colors and you can designate them. And so great resource. So if I'm over here and I spot turkey sign, I can go in and put that I saw tracks. Um, over here in this particular area, I actually know that they cross the river and um, head over to a roosting tree. And so that's why I have waypoints located here 
as places to hide and wait for them to come across that area and try and intercept them during the hunting season. So these are extremely helpful when you're out, especially on um, public land where you might have a lot more human traffic on the area. Um, it's helpful in order to know and remember where you're going to be trying to capture those species at. Um, any questions about onyx at this point? Okay, seeing none. So again, Christy brought up a great point. Um, onyx is a little bit behind in updating their information, but I very rarely have conflicts um, when I'm looking at an area. So the next part we're going to flip over to is the Nebraska Public Atlas and Stubble Access Guides. Eric, not all of it is a part of the free app. Um, it, majority of those functions are for paid. Um, you can access all of the layers and mark all of your layers, but the waypoints are actually a part of the paid because once you have an account, it saves all of that information there. You can utilize it as a free app portion, especially when out in the field, it'll help you kind of look around your areas and realize where you're at versus where um, the boundaries are at. Um, but part of this program today with our partnership with Onyx is everybody who's participating will actually get a 20% discount if they choose to sign up with Onyx Maps. Um, so I'll have a registration link at the end of the program and you'll be able to try that out for later on um, and, and have, save a discount there. So the public atlas and, and stubble access guides, you can pick these up at any of your district offices. So I currently have last year's stubble access guide. These are super handy in, in navigating your locations. I always have a copy in every one of our vehicles just in case I'm out driving around, might see signs of turkey um, or any other animal, or if I'm near an area that I think there's a WMA or any other public access, I like to have these around um, to cover that. Um, great, great way to, to help navigate. So this is what happened, what it looks like when you open up your public atlas. Each of these is broken down into a smaller, more containable, um, location and each number correlates with a page. So if I were to go in and open up to a page, I'd see the properties that are available. So the colored sections are the locations that are open for public access. Down in the bottom, you can see that map that I have showcased on the screen. And then there's colored zone showcasing which box you're actually in and which location you're at. They have little tick marks available when you're out, so you know which areas have roads going through them and which ones are just acre sections. Okay? So that's the nice part about these access guides are extremely helpful when you're essentially lost out in the wilderness and looking for locations to go to. So that is the physical form of these access guides. Now we actually have an online public atlas that's interactable as well. So here you can see the same quadrants that are in the physical publications, and you'll see all of the colors available for different properties via Game and Parks or partnerships. So here I'll switch over. In order to get to the public atlas, you go to outdoornebraska.gov, and you'll typically be taken to the homepage, or you can add in maps and it'll take you here to the maps page. You then will go down to this first section, public atlas, public access atlas, and click on it, and it'll load the map. You have your disclaimer, and then you have the view that I was discussing earlier. Now, I can zoom in here, and there we have Dogwood WMA which we were showcasing on Onyx. To the relevance case, the nice part about the Nebraska Public Atlas is anytime there's a program signed up for it, the information is entered into this public atlas guide. And so I can click on the colored portion and it tells me 
which species are allowed to be hunt and if there are any special regulations. So if you're on a WPA, a waterfowl production area, it'll make the notice that steel shot only or, or non-toxic shot. Um, there are other locations like you have open fields and waters locations that are open for hunting, but only during specific times of the year. And so that's the nice part to check the relevancy like Christy had put into the chat earlier. How do we know if everything's up to date? We can look and cross reference it here with the Nebraska Public Atlas. So you can see there's a bunch of different colors located on the map. You have the key on the left hand side. You can go to the layers and choose which locations you want to be taking off of that um, to help make it visible or um, more information based for yourself. Again, it's up to you on your preferences on what layers you want to keep open and available. This one does not have um, private lands on it um, unless the private lands are enrolled in a public program um, where they grant public access through that. Um, so you have, again, you have the different locations here colors change. So you have open fields and waters and they're red, WMAs and the lime green. And then you have fishing locations, um, recreation areas, different colors for different things. So follow your key on the left hand side um, for information about that. Again, transparency for what you're looking for. So similar to Onyx, if we were to be looking for a location to hunt our turkeys on, you can actually adjust the transparency of the plots or switch it to your imagery. And again, look at the locations you wanna hunt. So we have some nice fingers here with water sources, nice gaps in the trees to be able to capture those toms as they're coming through and shredding, and then plenty of trees for them to be roosting in. So again, we're, we're looking for that when we're looking for an area that might be hunt, um, might be available for hunting in that portion. Um, again, that clickable information, super helpful. Um, not all areas are open all species, so make sure you're checking that. Um, there was a location where I found a huge covey of quail and it wasn't open to quail, only turkey. Um, so be sure you're checking your, your information here um, to make sure that the species that you're desiring to harvest is open and available to hunt on that property. And then again, regulations change from location to location. So this is a nice place to check those references as well. Um, the nice part about public atlas is if you need directions, you have this direction function here. So if I wanted to head to Blue Hole, but I've never been there before, I can type in my location and the location that I'd like to get to, and it would provide me directions. So here we'll type in Arnie, and I want to get to Blue And this one took me a little bit further, but here you can see it gives me all of the directions to get to the location that I'd like to. This is able to be printed. Um, and so it's nice for being able to get to a new property that you haven't traditionally been to, especially for those that Blue Hole is right off the interstate. So it's fairly easy to get to. But if you're looking for something a little further off the beaten path, this is extremely helpful. Um, when trying to navigate to those new locations. Um, and again, really important, Onyx is a great tool and does try and keep their information as up to date as possible. But it's always great to double check on this public atlas guide um, before heading out to the field to make sure you're not um, breaking any of the rules that are available. Any questions about the public atlas? Where can you find, okay. So Eric asked the question, uh, where can we find CRP or OFW sites that are open for hunting? So I'm gonna switch back here. 
So if I want to find CRP locations, I go over here to my key. CRP is going to kind of be this peaches color. Um, and then you have OFW comes in a couple of different colors depending on its public access opening. Um, some are only open to fishing and trapping. Others are open um, during all but deer season. And so Eric, you'll want to use those colors and recognize them on the map. So in this case, if I were to zoom out, I have lots of different choices. And I'm noticing our Southwest Nebraska has tons of OFW and CRP available. So I can zoom in and again, click on the site and you can see CRP available. Up here, you can see open fields and waters. That means that CRP site has been enrolled for public access. Um, and so you're able to hunt on that location. Are there any open year round um, restrictions on dates? Let me see if I can find one here. So you'll notice here program all, see, all open seasons. Trying to find one that has deer only restrictions. Let me see. It's going to be pink outline. And of course, our Southwestern is very open. So if you were looking for the, the different ones um, that are open for different times, again, you'll look at the key. So here you have some um, fishing only locations, but here we go. There's a CRP with restrictions. So this is an open fields and water site and they have restrictions no hunting during the nine season nine day season rifle or deer hunting and so you'll find it on this map as well as if you're out wandering about crp and open fields and water sites do have signs on them um, showcasing that they are open for, for properties and they'll have some of the restrictions. So if they have the restriction like the nine day season, it'll say um, restricted to no rifle season for deer hunting. And so you can see it physically on the map by the different colors. Let me get off of that so you can see it. Um, or you can see it if you're out driving around, especially for preseason scouting, um, you'll see it physically on the signs when you're looking at the areas. Um, do notice during this time, because we had some uh, drought season in the Southwest and um, there were some changes typically in a no haying area, there were some emergency hangs taking place. Um, this is beneficial to wildlife as well as to making sure that the landowners can make a living off of the properties. So there are cases where things might change based on how the season's going for, for the landowners. So there might be some changes, do be flexible with some of that. Shouldn't be too many changes here in the spring season. I will note here that the stubble access guide comes out halfway through the year. These are programs that are enrolled in the spring that don't make the fall publication. Um, so these are nice to pick up mid season to see some of the changes that go on throughout the year. Um, let's get, get some of the questions. Christy said, if you go to an OFW and there aren't any NGPC public access, can I still hunt it? Ooh, good question. I'm not quite sure. Um, a lot of times what happens is people tend to steal signs or especially with the cold season we've had this winter, signs can break. Um, what I would do in the case, if I am not sure, is I would call a district office of, for Game and Parks or your local game warden and verify it. Um, just to be on the safe side. It might be on the map, um, but if there's no signs, it might be a new program that was just enrolled and there's not signs up, or again, signs get broken or stolen. Just call with the district office or your local game warden to verify access on it. Um, again, information's tried to be kept as up to date as possible, but it's always best to be a responsible hunter and, and showcase that and get a hold of somebody who does know or can help you with that answer. Okay, so that's our public at atlas, um, another great resource for looking for locations that would be great for hunting on that location. Um, as you can see, 
tons of great public atlas uh, or public access properties available around the state. You do just need to travel around the properties and see what's going to look best for you and the opportunities that you have available. That Southwest is super popular with turkeys and it has a lot of public access on it. But again, Nebraska is one of the best um, in the nation for turkey hunting. So you'll be able to find turkeys in a lot of different locations. Moving on to our guides, you also have these available online at our website. Um, you can go dash guides, um, switch back here, show you how to navigate. So if you go to outdoornebraska.gov, guides is on the upper kind of middle portion. You can click on that. And similar to the maps, it'll take you directly to all of the guides that are available. Here you'll have, these will redirect you to the, the public atlas online, and then your turkey guide is located here. This is available to read directly online, or you can download it as a, uh, a PDF. And great resource for checking in on regulations if you're not familiar with them. Additionally, this has the district offices as well as the game warrants contact information with it. I like to keep a guide in my backpack. That way, if I'm like, mm, can I do that or can't I do that? Um, it's a great resource to whip out and be able to double check with it. And so again, you have all those guides. Here I pulled a couple of pages from our 2021 Turkey Guide. So we have our dates getting ready to open up later here in March um, and go through May 31st. It's one of the longest seasons um, available. And permit offices, again, if you have questions about access areas that don't have signs, you're not quite sure about it, give a call to one of those district offices and they'd be happy to try and connect you with somebody. You also have the conservation officers located here on page 24 if you need more information. Great resource, double check it, read it every season because it's your responsibility as a hunter to understand the laws. And if you don't understand them, contact your conservation officer because they'd much rather help you out with a question than write you a ticket in the field. So there's our, our guides. That's about all I have today. Are there any questions um, utilizing some of these um, planning your hunts, the mapping tools that are virtually online or any other questions that might be relevant to beginning your turkey season? Seems like everybody's pretty quiet here. I'm gonna post a link here in the chat. Um, Christy asked, can you buy permits online? Yes, you can purchase your permits online or in district offices. Um, and uh, you can, what it does is it emails you your permits so you can make, have your physical copy um, as well. Um, next Saturday um, for our spring Saturdays, series that it was launched this morning. We have decoy placement. Julia just posted the, the workshop schedule there in the chat if you're interested in learning more. Um, I also have the link if you have participated today and are interested in that discount for an Onyx membership, feel free to fill that out and I will send you the discount code. Otherwise, best of luck during this uh, upcoming spring season. Um, and um, feel free to complete that form. If you have any questions, I'll post my email in the chat again. Christy asked, can you have your permit on your phone? Um, I'd have to double check that, Christy, but I believe for turkey season, you can now um, of have your permit on your phone. That's not for all species, but I believe turkey can now. Um, again, double check with your, your um, turkey guide to confirm with that. Um, Jordan, how do I find district offices to buy permits if you wish to purchase in person? Um, you can go to Game and Parks' website, Outdoor Nebraska. And Jordan, there's vendor permits, vendor spots too. I'll, I'll find yep. them. I mean, you can even purchase them at vendors statewide. And I so will. I, down at the bottom, if you scroll to the bottom, it says permit vendors, and it'll take you to the list of the vendors. Walmart is one of the sponsors that helps with that. Cabela's doesn't do it anymore. Um, and then trying to remember where the district offices are located at, but it is listed in your 
um, well, in the turkey yeah. guide, it has the addresses in there. Yeah. So I can. Uh, Kearney, Omaha, Lincoln, and then a lot of the park offices too, that you can purchase them at our state parks. Yep. So looking in your turkey guide, page four it has the address and the phone number. Um, Julia, are most of the offices open now or is it call by appointment still? Nope, you can go in. You can okay. definitely go in and buy them. Um, we're even going to be starting to do some. We just found out we can probably start doing some in-person train uh, programs starting April 1st. So we're pretty uh, excited about that. Fantastic. I'm excited um, for that. Yeah. And the other other thing is, is like we've posted a couple of times is we're going to be doing some more turkey hunting workshops every Saturday for the next, I think, seven weeks. Also, as in addition to all this, is we are going to be launching out a mystery, a turkey hunting gear uh, mystery box. Product in that box is going to um, assist you in your turkey hunting. And then it'll also connect to our upcoming programs. We're pretty uh, excited about that. You can find out more information on that work, that link that I posted. Um, and we're, like I said, we, uh, you, you will be excited to see that and some educational offerings to come. Fantastic. I'm excited to see all of this. Um, yeah, it, I'm ready for turkey season. We still have yeah. a month, but I'm ready for turkey season. <laughs> yes, in, in today's like warm weather, I have spring and turkey fever. Yep, it's, and it's perfect time to scout, especially if you don't wanna scout when we get snow here in a few more days try and hit it out today and, and track out some spots near you on that public access. Um, turkeys should be getting close to their normalized behavior. So they might not, if you out and you see them right now, that might not be a normal zone for them as they're just now starting to spread back out into their normal groups. Um, but definitely mark it down. And, and if you can see them, then it's gonna be a, hopefully a good spot to, to set up for turkey season here. Somewhere. Yeah, and when you're out there turkey, uh, they're looking for those spots, then you might even find some sheds. Deer yep. too, so double dose right this time of year. Well, thanks, Holly. And um, Holly has posted her email in there a couple times. Always feel free to contact her. Uh, you can send a message through the event itself. Um, and she has posted that link to be able to get your discount for on access too for, for joining us this morning. The recording will be posted in the event um, and Pheasants Forever will also upload it to our YouTube page so that you can access it for future reference as well. Feel free to reach out to any of our biologists as well if you're looking for a location um, on best locations to hunt for turkeys. Many of them will uh, help you get a location chosen as well. So I just posted that link down there if you're interested in that. But otherwise, thank you so much for attending today. It was exciting getting to, to speak with everyone and um, good luck on your, on your future turkey endeavors. Thanks, Holly. And we hope to see everyone next week again too.